we're going to be talking about the order of operations. Isaac, laureate of the Da Vinci Institute. Now, you might already know me as a laureate from the Da Vinci Institute in South Africa. What's the order of operations? Well, it's PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Now, how is it invented? Well, around the 1880s, the first textbook surfaced saying that you should most probably avoid equations with both multiplication and division in it. Later textbooks suggested that multiplication and division should be done in the order in which they appear. And now, in 1912, Webster W. Wells and some other guy whose name also started with a W created the order of operations parentheses first, or grouping symbols first, then exponents, and then multiplication and division in the order of which they appear, and then addition and subtraction in the order of which they appear. Alright, ignore that. So, what are multiple, well, we already learned about operations. We already learned about the arithmetic stuff. If you haven't, go watch it. So we know addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So, what about each one? So, how do we use multiple digits for each of these? Well, on addition, it's pretty simple. Let's see, we have a two-digit number, for example, 65 and the one digit number, seven. Now how would we add them together? Well, let's add them using the stack method. What this does is, it basically lines up both of your numbers. And you get something like this. Now, is what you will have most of the time. In the stack method, you, we do know that for addition, there is a commutative property. So if we wanted to, we could theoretically write it like this. But I mean, that's a bit too hard. And it also doesn't account for a, a little thing we're about to do called regrouping. So, five plus seven, first of all. Five plus seven, if you memorize or addition the facts, is 12. So, we write 12. But wait a second, there's another lane over here. There is another addition problem over here, six plus zero, but there's only something in the answer. But this one can't just go nowhere, can it? That's why you're doing regrouping. You see these 12 one? Well, let's write them down. So 12. Now, since we, we have to take group of 10. So, let's see. How many 10s can we harvest here? Just one. These two are not enough to make another 10. So that means that we will take that other 10 and put it on the 10th place for addition. Why? Because there's also something else that we need to input in the answer. So we can't just keep this one laying in the answer. We have to bring it somewhere else. I'm going to just carefully erase this. All right. So now, where will we bring this one? Well, we'll bring it to the top. And this is the reason that I said earlier that we couldn't take the one with less digits and put it on top. So, 1 plus 6. 1 plus 6 is obviously 7. So, boom, 72. That's a solid answer. Let's try one more time with hmm, three digit numbers this time. And by the way, a little footnote. If both of your numbers
unicorns have the same ability of digits, you can put them either way. Nothing will happen. So for example, the smaller number is on the top, but that won't change anything. 5 plus 3 is 8. 3 plus 2 is 5. 2 plus 4 is 6. That's an example with one without regrouping. So what about with regrouping? Well, let's change up the numbers a bit. Let's say we have... Hmm. We have this number on the bottom. 789 or 789. Wait. Oh my goodness, 7 is a cannibal. So, 5 plus 9. We know that's 14. And remember, that 1 did not fit over here. So, we have to bring it to the top. And 1 plus 3 plus 8. Well, 3 plus 8 is 11. And 11 plus 1 is 12. And once again, this 1 does not fit in the hundreds place. So we have to bring it up to the top. So we get 1 plus 2 plus 7, which is 10. But that answer is two digits as well. So where do we put the extra 1? Well, we put it nowhere. Since there's nothing else on the row that the one is on, since there's nothing else over here, that means that that one can stay in the answer place that it is in. So, those are two examples of multi-digit addition. Now, for subtraction. Well, what if we wanted to subtract those two numbers we originally had? 789 and 235. Well, it would be easy because 9 minus 5 is 4, 8 minus 3 is 5, 7 minus 2 is 5. 554. Boom. But there's also something kind of like regrouping and subtracting. No, not exact. Let's say we have 645 minus 300. And 89. No, that's too uncreative. 387. Now, obviously, 645 is bigger than 387. But it seems that this digit, 7, is bigger than this digit, 5. So, how do we solve this problem? Well, what we can do is kind of like a backwards regrouping. You see this 4? It's in the tenths place. So it actually represents 4. Now, what if we took 10 of those and gave them to the 5? Then we have 30, which is 3 tenths. So what we can do is 4, we're going to split into 3 and 1. And that 1 is going to go over to the 5. And remember, since that 1 was in the 10th place, it doesn't represent just 1 singular. It represents 10 because it's 1 10. So this 1 goes over here. And this 5 suddenly becomes 15. And 15 minus 7 is 8. So... We're going to make it how it originally was, just for no confusion. And people, most of the time, cross out the previous digit and write the new digit above, or the new number above. All right, 15 minus seven, that's obviously eight. But now we run into the same problem. Three minus eight? That doesn't work either. So what can we do? Well, we can do the same exact thing. You know we have 30 and 80. But remember, we have this 6 in the hundreds place. So, the 6 represents 600. Now, once again, what if we took 100 away from that and gave it? to this place. 
Well, you're going to get 500, which is 500. So what we can do is we can make this five and the other one can be carried over here. And remember, this one represents 100. And 100 is made out of 10. 10. 10 plus 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 10 is equal to 100. So, we can change this to 10 plus 3 is 13. And 13 minus 8 is 5. Now 5 minus 3 is 2, and the problem's all done. But nice! So that's a bit complicated, but we got through it. Now get ready for multiplication. Let's say we had uh, 54 and 63. Now we're going to break this up into little steps. So our first step is going to be this, and our second step is going to be this. So first we're going to multiply three and four. Three times four is equal to 12. So we put the two, but once again, there's a one block in the answer place. The same problem we had with the this. So what do we do? Well, this one is a 10. So it goes on top over here. We're going to just keep it there for the time being. And so we've done the first step. And now we need to do the second step. So three times five is 15. So that gives you one, five, two. Remember, there's nothing in the column that one is in. <clears throat> now, what some people do is, since we're multiplying things in the tens place, they put a zero over here. Others put an X, but for our purposes, we're going to put a zero, because that makes it easier to understand. Now we have six times four, which is, Technically, 60 times 4, which is 240. But remember, that's already accounted for because of this zero. So 6 times 4, it's... Wait, wait. We did this step. But remember, there are two other steps remaining. You have to multiply 6 by 4 and eventually 6 by 5. So now... Um, we have a bit of chaotic coloring over here. Let's, uh, oh, so we had 152 in this zero. So we already did the first step and the second step. Now, multiplying six by four gives you 24. Yeah, however, now we realize this is kind of being blocked. So, actually, probably better to understand using an X. So six times four is 24. <coughs> However, now six times five is going to be 300. But uh-oh, look like there's something already there, the two. So that's why we are going to have To carry this to. So we get 152 and then we multiply the 6 by the 4, 24, and then the 6 by the 5 gives us, <coughs> sorry, 324. Now we add what we have. Wait a second. <coughs> oh yeah. So now we add what we have. 2, 9, Three, three. Boom. 3,392. That's how you do a multi digit multiplication. And finally, multi digit division. Well, 
There is something called long division that we will need to use for this. Now, let's say we had, <coughs> let's get uh, some random numbers. Let's say we had <coughs> 400 and, hmm, what should we pick? 62 and 21. <coughs> so, first of all, we subtract from this 4 itself. Now, how many times can 21 go into 4? Well, 0. 4 minus 21, which is 21 times 1, is not going to be anything. Not going to be greater than 0. So, that means it can go into it 0 times. 4 minus 0. So, we have to write 4 minus 0 over here. And on the quotient, we write a zero because that's how many times it went in. <coughs> now, we get 46 this time. We've carried down the six. <coughs> so, 46, how many times can 21 go into 46? Well, it can go one time, so we get 25, but it can go another time as well. So, what we can do is we say it goes into 46 twice. So, we're going to write 42 because that's 21 times 2. That's the highest multiple of 21 that's less than 46. So, that goes into it two times. And we still have four left. Now let's break down the 2. Well, we have 42 over here. And now, how many times, what is the greatest multiple of 21 that is not greater than 42? You guessed it, that's 42. So, 42 is 21 times 2, meaning 21 went in twice to 42 as well. So, we get a remainder of 0 and an answer of 22. So, 462 divided by 21 is 22. Now, sometimes you will get remainder, and these act like decimals, but we'll get to that in the next.